Is the COVID-19 pandemic an opportunity for us to rethink our current energy system? Jean-Michel Gauthier, Professor and Executive Director of the Energy and Finance Chair at HEC Paris, explains the global consequences of the coronavirus and paints a picture of the future of the energy transition right here at the heart of the European Union. For want of a proper treatment of vaccine against COVID-19, governments were left with cutting social ties and stopping business as the only one available policy solution. With countries under lockdowns and travel bans, with empty roads and empty skies, the coronavirus pandemic crunched oil demand so hard that crude oil prices fell below zero for the first time in ever recorded history. We must remember that the transport industry accounts for 50% of the global oil demand. And when the transport industry grinds to a halt, the oil industry also grinds to a halt. The oil industry is not just going through another demand shock, like in 2008 or 1998. Today, it suffers the worst blow ever, which takes place after years of energy transition that had just started to curb demand and which, first and foremost, happens against the backdrop of a Saudi-Russia price war that resulted in increasing an already oversupplied market. At $30 per barrel and below, nothing works at all, in Northern America in particular, and up to 60% of the US production becomes uneconomical. The so-called U.S. energy independence is under serious threat and the U.S. is better off importing Saudi oil again. The repercussions of this unprecedented price collapse are potentially phenomenal. For oil-producing countries, the revenues have been slashed by up to 80% back in April and May. The worst hit include Venezuela and Nigeria, but also Iraq and Kuwait, as well as all of those who never managed to diversify their economy away from the extractive industries. For some oil majors, the situation could also become a matter of long-term survivability, and a new business model has to be found. Before the pandemic, the oil majors thought they could continue their business, pay down their debt, ramp up dividend, and invest into cleaner energy businesses at the same time. Under $30 per barrel or below, they cannot continue, produce at a profit, further reduce cost, and maintain dividends. They could consider disposing of mature assets, but we know that selling assets at a time of downturn is not the most attractive option. Ironically enough, the situation could have a huge backlash against the energy transition. Let's not forget that the oil majors' technical and financial capabilities will be an essential contribution to a low-carbon economy. Energy transition policies with a view to meeting carbon neutrality by 2050 might actually slow down as a result of COVID-19. I can see at least three causes for concern. The first one is with a low oil price and definitely under a $30 $30 per barrel oil price scenario, fossil fuels with high carbon emissions will offer uh, competitive alternatives to renewable energy sources. And that might uh, derail the energy transition uh, process. It will be much more competitive to use fossil fuels with competitive logistics, with high uh, concentration on energy and uh, flexible supply chain, rather than uh, developing more renewable capacity new build. The second reason could be a repeat of what we saw at the end of the uh, global financial crisis back in 2008, 2009 and 10, essentially when we saw that the return to business as usual actually resulted in a significant level of CO2 emissions worldwide. 
And by 2010, emissions reached record high uh, level. And that was the reason why, in particular, that most of the uh, measures implemented by governments to stimulate the economies would be based on an increased use of fossil fuel, on kick-starting heavy industries and uh, high emission industries. And fundamentally, we saw that the way back to normal was going through fossil fuels and uh, carbon emission. History could repeat itself, unfortunately, and could derail the action course consistent with the pathway uh, towards meeting a temperature increase up to 1.5 degrees or 2 degrees Celsius by uh, 2040 or 2050. And the third reason might be that the pandemic could leave governments too debt strapped, too much in, with uh, too high an indebtedness uh, ratio for them to be able to embark upon new debt with a view to financing emissions cut and uh, the combat against climate change. This is why energy transition uh, policies, unfortunately, might drop by a few notches in the order of priorities of governments. In actual fact, my view sits at the other end of the spectrum. I do believe that the pandemic might, on the contrary, act as an accelerator of past trends, including the fight against climate change, rather than slow down or halt the energy transition process. The reason is that if we look at it, pandemic and climate accidents are very similar in nature. Both are exogenous physical systemic shocks which are largely unpredictable and which destroy societies, businesses and people. Another reason or a proof that in fact pandemic might act as an accelerator rather than slow down the process is what we see in global geopolitics. Post-pandemic geopolitics give us evidence of that. If we look at how the COVID-19 crisis speeds up the big disconnect between Asian and Western economies and powers, or when we look at the US pulling out of multilateral organizations further, or when we look at Washington's increasing showdown with Beijing, all of these trends were already well underway and they've been sped up by the COVID-19. Most EU member states leaders and the International Energy Agency have made it loud and clear that there is no way out of the COVID crisis other than committing further to the EU decarbonisation policy and carbon neutrality objective. The announcement last week by European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen, as well as Angela Merkel and Emmanuel Macron, of a gigantic European recovery package is clearly showing the way. The amount of the package which includes a mix of grants, loans and guarantees, is absolutely mind-boggling and reaches a total of 1.85 trillion euros, which have been committed to kickstart the EU economy again. This amount, close to 2 US dollar trillion, is equivalent in real dollar terms to more than 10 times the 1948 Marshall Plan to rebuild Europe after the war. The repayment of the loan portion is understood to come from the EU's emissions trading scheme, a plastic tax, as well as a levy on digital giants. It is due to start 2028, finishing 2058, a point in time when the EU is meant to be carbon neutral or even carbon negative. The question now is, Having realised that the EU model is not sustainable with its dependency on China and the GAFAs, will we be serious about reshaping globalisation, shortening supply chains and developing new technologies? Or are we going to revert back to the world before the pandemic? If the European Recovery Fund is used as a demand stimulus package, then our massive investment into a new EU low-carbon energy mix will give the old world a new life. And we will continue importing Chinese solar panels, transferring value to China and supporting Chinese R&D. And the EU 
will fall short of the technologies and other components necessary for its energy transition for a lot longer. Instead of importing maturing technologies, the European recovery package should be used where everything starts, investing in EU research and development of technologies, EU universities and EU labs, because sovereignty always starts with the command of technology.